Happy Cato Sunday. Here is a church. We honor our church family members who are 80 years old and older on Cato Sunday. And as already been shared, Cato Sunday is celebrated on the Sunday before Cato no Hi, which is respect for the elderly day, which is celebrated in Japan on the third Monday of September. We want to affirm that long life is a blessing from the Lord. In the Bible, long life is associated with a loving relationship with God. Psalm 91, 14 through 16, it says, Because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. These are God's words to those who love him. God speaks blessings over those who love him. People in the Lord, are we not the people who love God? As such, are we not here this morning to express our love to God through our offerings of praise and thanksgiving to him? And as those who love him, God blesses us with his presence protection, and provision. And such blessings also include long life and his salvation. So those of you who are 80 years old and older are truly blessed of the Lord. And we celebrate that blessing with you as a church family. A couple of Sundays ago, I talked about Abraham. And as we saw, Abraham's faith in God continued to grow throughout his lifetime. Well, to be specific, Abraham's faith in God continued to grow in his old age. Remember, he was called by God to leave his own country and family to God's promised land at the ripe old age of 75. He was then given the child of promise to him and his wife, Sarah, when he was 100 years old. And many years later, Abraham was told by God to offer Isaac as a burnt offering. Now, it's not in my notes, but just for those who don't know the story, no, God stopped that. God did not want the burnt offering. God provided a separate sacrifice. 念のためにこの話を知らない方のためにこの、えー、生贄にえは神様は、えー、受け取りませんでした。神様は供え物を支えられ,られ,れ、えー、そしてイサクは守られました。But his faith was challenged. しかし信仰は試されたのです。So each step of the way, Abraham's faith in God grew, and his ability to humbly obey God grew as well. Thus, all of us here this morning, whether we are 11 years old or 80 plus years old, or however old we may be, can learn from Abraham's example of faith in God and growing in that life of faith. Although we recognize Abraham as the father of faith, There was a time when Abraham didn't live boldly or courageously as a person who fully trusted in God. Soon after Abraham went to Canaan, we are told in Genesis 12, 10, that he went down to Egypt because there was a severe famine in the land. However, as he came near to Egypt, we see how Abraham acted out of fear for his life. Genesis 12, 11 through 13. It came about when he came near to Egypt that he said to Sarai, his wife, See now, I know that you are a beautiful woman. And when the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife. And they will kill me, but they will let you live. Please say that you are my sister, so that it may go well with me because of you, and that I may live on account of you. Just as Abraham feared, When the Egyptians saw the, that Sarai or Sarah was very beautiful, she was taken into Pharaoh's house. And because of Abraham's relationship as Sarah's brother, he was treated well and was given livestock and servants. 
However, these things did not please God. So God struck Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah. Pharaoh calls Abraham out for lying about his wife Sarah and tells him to take her and go. As we can see from this glimpse of Abraham's life, he was a flawed human being just like us. Yet, what we also see in Abraham's life is how he continued to grow in his walk of faith in God. We saw this last Sunday as Abraham humbly gave his nephew Lot the first choice in where to settle when it was determined that they needed to part ways. Lot chose where he would live based on what seemed good to his eyes, that is, by mere appearances. Abraham trusted in God's choice for him, which was ultimately the promised land of Canaan. As Pastor Okura challenged us to do, Abraham learned to live by faith and not by sight. As Abraham's faith in God grew, he also learned to live courageously as well. We see such courage displayed in what is recorded in Genesis 14. In Genesis 14, 1 through, 2, 2, 1 through 2, we are told of four kings in the eastern part of Mesopotamia who sought to dominate the land of Canaan by subjug subjugating five kings who lived there. The battle of these nine kings takes place in the valley of Siddim. In the process of this battle, Abraham's nephew Lot was taken captive along with all those who lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. Having been told of Lot's captivity, Abraham responded swiftly. Genesis 14, 14 through 16, when Abraham heard that his relative had been taken captive, he let out his trained men, both born in his house, 318, and went in pursuit as far as Dan. He divided his forces against them by night, he and his servants, and he defeated them and pursued them as far as Hobah, which is north of Damascus. He brought back all the goods and also brought back his relative Lot with his possessions and also the woman and the people. Thus we see a brave and courageous Abraham here, not like how he acted as he went to Egypt. Abraham risked his life by getting involved in a war with the Mesopotamian kings. Also, given the Near East practices of the time, he risked becoming a target for retaliation. Regardless of these concerns, Abraham took with him 318 men and went into battle against an alliance of four armies. God gave Abraham the victory, and he was able to recover Lot and the possessions the enemy kings had taken. If Abraham had acted based on what he saw with his eyes, he probably would not have gone into battle. However, out of his love for his nephew Lot and his faith in God, Abraham went into battle. And he fully understood that he was victorious because God was with him. We see this in what followed after Abraham's successful military campaign. Genesis 14, 17 through 20. Then after his return from the defeat of Chedorlaomer and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh, that is, the king's valley. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. Now he was a priest of God Most High. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Abraham gave him a tenth of all. The valley of Shaveh was near Jerusalem. In Psalm 76 2, Jerusalem is referred as Salem, as in this passage of scripture. We are told that the king of Sodom went out to meet Abraham at the king's valley near Jerusalem. However, another king suddenly shows up before Abraham. It is Melchizedek who was the king of ancient Jerusalem, 
and who was also a priest of God Most High. Melchizedek in Hebrew means king of righteousness. One thing very unique about Melchizedek, Melchizedek was that he was both a king and a priest. And in that land of Canaan, it was even more unique to have a worshiper and priest of the one and only true God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. In other words, Melchizedek and Abraham worshipped the same God. They both also acknowledged Abraham's victory in battle as due to the blessings of God. Thus, Melchizedek brought out bread and wine to Abraham. Melchizedek gave a royal banquet in Abraham's honor. He then blessed Abraham by stating how God had indeed blessed Abraham by delivering him from the hand of his enemies. As a priest, Melchizedek did two things. He not only blessed Abraham, but he also blessed God. It is, interest, it is interesting to note how Abraham responded to God's blessing given through Melchizedek. It says that he gave him a tenth of all. In other words, Abraham presented a tenth of all that God had given him to Melchizedek as a way of acknowledging the God whom he worshipped and whom Melchizedek served as a priest, which is a great lesson for us to learn from. As we give our tithes and offerings to God, we do so through the church that worships God and where people serve God in offices of ministry. When we are blessed by God, we follow up that blessing by returning thanksgiving to God through our tithes and offerings to him. After Abraham's encounter with Melchizedek, the king of Sodom approaches him. Genesis 14, 21 through 24. The king of Sodom said to Abram, give the people to me and take the goods for yourself. Abraham, Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have sworn to the Lord God most high possessor of heaven and earth that I will not take a thread or a sandal thong or anything that is yours. For fear you would say, I have made Abram rich. I will take nothing except what the young men have eaten and the share of the men who went with me, Aner, Eshkol, and Mamre. Let them take their share. Though Abraham freely received God's blessings, he refused the offer by the king of Sodom. As we have read about Sodom in last Sunday's worship service, the people of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. That's in Genesis 13, 13. Abraham probably wanted nothing to do with a king of such a wicked and sinful city. Abraham explained clearly to the king of Sodom his reasoning for not receiving anything from the king. He did not want to be indebted to any human being because he wanted the Lord God Most High to be the only one to be credited as providing for his every need and blessings. Although Abraham would not take any of the spoil from Sodom and Gomorrah that was recovered, he did not impose his principles on his Amorite allies. So in this passage of scripture, we see Abraham's faith in God exercised in his going to battle in order to deliver his nephew Lot from captivity. We also see Abraham's faith in God through his affiliation with and acceptance of Melchizedek as a royal, royal priest who served the same God that he did. And we also see Abraham's faith in God through his dealings with the wicked king of Sodom. Abram acted courageously in going into battle, and he was also courageous in saying no to non-God-ordained blessings. In all these things, Abraham expressed his faith in God, and God blessed him with his presence, protection, and provision. Now, let me take the time to talk a little more about Melchizedek. As a historical figure, we only see Melchizedek appear 
in the three verses that we just read in Genesis 14, 18 through 20. However, Melchizedek is mentioned also in Psalm 110, verse 4, and in the New Testament in the book of Hebrews. Psalm 110 is a psalm of David, and it is understood to be a messianic psalm. In fact, the first verse of the psalm is an oft-quoted verse in reference to Jesus as the Messiah in the New Testament. Psalm 110 and 1, The Lord says to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Many of you are probably familiar with this verse. Have you heard that verse before? Maybe. In that same psalm is the following. Psalm 110, 4. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. This being obviously a messianic prophecy, it is pointing to the fact that the Messiah is a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. This idea is expounded upon further by the author of the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 5, 5 through 10. So also Christ did not glorify himself so as to become a high priest, but he who said to him, you are my son, Today I have begotten you. Just as he says also in another passage, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, he offered up both prayers and supplications with loud crying and tears to the one able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his piety. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation, being designated by God as a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Here in this passage of scripture, we see clearly that Jesus is a high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. At the same time, we see in Jesus his obedience to God and his suffering and how he became to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation. The, signific the significance of this is further explained in Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7, 1 through 3, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham as he was returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham apportioned a tenth part of all the spoils, was first of all, by the translation of his name, King of Righteousness, and then also King of Salem, which is King of Peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, he remains a priest perpetually. The writer of Hebrews demonstrated that Melchizedek is a type of Christ. He did this by noting that both Melchizedek and Christ Jesus are a king of righteousness as well as a king of peace. He also pointed out that both are unique in that they have neither beginning of days nor end of life and remains a priest perpetually. However, Jesus Christ is superior to even Melchizedek. Because Jesus Christ is not just our high priest, but as the Son of God has made atonement for our sins through his sacrifice. This is how the writer of Hebrews wraps up chapter 7, by highlighting that Jesus, what Jesus has done for us. Hebrews 7, 26 through 28. For it was fitting for us to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens, who does not need daily like those high priests to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people, because this he did once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men as high priests who are weak, but the word of the oath which came after the law appoints a son made perfect forever." 
As our heavenly high priest, Jesus continues to bless us who love God. Therefore, let us continually count and remember the blessings that God gives to us. Let us also continually express our gratitude to God for the many blessings we have received from him by giving a tithe to the Lord. Abraham met Melchizedek only once in his lifetime. It came after a key battle in his life. We may meet Jesus only once in our lifetime. This encounter often comes during a key battle in our lives. Are you going through such a battle right now? Perhaps it is a health issue you are battling with. Perhaps it is a financial issue you are battling with. Or maybe it is a relational issue you are battling with. But more importantly, at some point in our lives, we will all face a battle that will involve our very life. It will be a battle within your heart that will expose your need for a savior. Whatever your battle may be, turn to Jesus and he will meet you at where you are at. He will give you victory that only he can provide for you. He will give you deliverance and save you. We are sure of this through Jesus' words to his disciples. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation. But take courage. I have overcome the world. We are also reminded of our victory in Christ through what the Apostle John has written. 1 John 5, it says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is the one who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has the life. He who does not have the son of God does not have the life. We can live as overcomers in this world through our faith in Jesus Christ. And this life with Jesus, the son of God, means that we have been given eternal life with God. People in the Lord we are people who love God. As such, we come together every Sunday morning to express our love to God through our offerings of praise and thanksgiving to him. And as those who love him, God blesses us with his presence, protection, and provision. And such blessings also include long life and his salvation. As I think about the special Cato Sunday slide presentation that we saw earlier this morning, I am reminded that many of our beloved church family members who were here last year are no longer with us. Actually, they are now enjoying a better life, a much longer life in God's salvation. For there is no life that is longer and a salvation that is greater than eternal life with God. For us, there is no end of God's blessings. For those who love God are those who are loved by God. And nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Romans 8, 37 through 39 says, But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Therefore, let us live a life of victory in Christ. 
Such a life is one in which we are blessed by God and one in which we can give back to God out of the abundance that He blesses us with. Let us pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Thank you for your love for all of us and sending us your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the blessings you have given to us throughout our lifetime. あなたが私たちに与えてくださった祝福に感謝します As part of such blessings, thank you for the long life and your salvation that you have given to the elderly in our church family that we honor today. そのような祝福の一部として今日私たちが敬っている教会家族の高齢者に与えてくださった長寿とあなたの救いに感謝します。Thank you also for blessing us with eternal life with you through Jesus Christ. またイエスキリストを通してあなたと共に生きる永遠の命の祝福を感謝します。There is no greater blessing than this, and we thank you that we can celebrate this together as those who love you, and are loved by you. これ以上の祝福はありません。ですからあなたを愛し、あなたに愛されているものとして共にこれを祝うことができることを感謝します。Please help us to never forget all the blessings that you have given us and enable us to respond to your goodness to us through our offerings of praise and service as well as through our tithes. あなたが私たちに与えてくださった全ての恵みを決して忘れることがないように、そして賛美と奉仕の捧げ物を野十分の一献金を通してあなたの慈しみに応えることができるようにしてください。Please help us to continually live a life of love and faith in you that pleases you and brings you glory. あなたを喜ばせ。あなたに栄光をもたらすようなあなたへの愛と信仰に満ちた人生を送り続けることができますようにどうか私たちを助けてください。We pray this in Jesus' holy name.イエス様の聖なる皆によって祈ります。Amen. Amen.